Good morning. How are we doing? So I am very early today. Uh, kids kept me up all night and I'm back on site. Um, it's been a few days since I've done any filming, since I've done any recording of anything. Um, so I thought whilst I'm early, I've had my vitamins, I'll come in and, and do a very quick sort of fly-by guide on how we organize our cables um, for, for pulling them in when we're doing a new build. Um, so if you're not sure, this is, this is going to give you some sort of idea on how you can do it. Insert super cool animated intro with my name coming in lightning bolts and all sorts of graphics. So what I'll do for this is I'll use my fancy Luceco light with the hook on. Uh, what can I hook it on to? Let's see if we can find something here. There we go. Move these ladders out the way a little bit. So, how do we organise them? Um, well, the first thing to do is get your roots in. So, every house is basically split like a cross. So, you've got your front door, and this isn't this is a general rule, obviously, but for new builds, it's so you've basically got a line straight across, and then you've got lines going across the house. And if you think about if you think logically about how a house is sort of laid out. Let me show you this here. You've got your front door and you go up and then you've got going across. There's your stairs. And if you go upstairs, exactly the same again. From down below, you go straight across and across and everything's laid out almost like a cross. So your first route you want to get in is your straight lines from the front door. So, the, so here we have two routes going through, straight through the property. And what we do is we get cable tie bases, um, which I don't know if you can see one that's come off there. So they have a sticky pad on the back uh, and you put a screw through it. And now that one there and um, the screw, if you go a bit too hard with a screw, what happens is um, it, it, it will break because it's plastic. Um, it doesn't break, it just makes the hole through it a bit bigger. What I'll do is I'll, I'll get a little video of one in a minute. And I'll, I'll do that. So you screw that up and then your cable tie goes through it. Leave it like a big loop. And then that way you can feed your cables through nice and easy. Um, there's less risk of it snagging, etc. because it's plastic. Uh, and it's got a bit of movement in it. So as the cable's going through, it can move left and right. So you get your cable route in that way. And then you basically want to be looking at getting a cable route going across. Now in here, we've chose our main cable route going that way. Above where the kitchen's going to be. For obvious reasons, there's a lot of stuff to go on the kitchen. Now these cables at this moment haven't been what we call like tied in. So basically when we pull something down into a accessory like over here, what we do is we leave a little bit of length on it to come through. And then that way when you come up here and you tie them together, if you come to a 90 where it's just pulled straight across instead of going sort of like that in a 90 and it's just gone through, it gives you that little bit of space to pull it across then. So we'll get them down into there through the cable tie routes and then we also split them power and data. Now in these new builds we have quite a bit of data so every single TV point has at least one data cable going to it. We have coax, we have sky cables, um, what else do we have? We have the BT fiber incomer that comes into the main, we have the alarms, so we have door contacts, we have alarms, we have alarm panels. Um, everything to do with the alarm we have the ring doorbell so there's a lot of sort of um what we would call generally data um which is basically just not 230 cable and um, that goes in so where do you take it to well obviously you take it to the consumer unit um so we obviously get given a pre position where the consumer unit is going to go but we have free reign on the layout almost so what we do or what I do is we'll agree with the plumbers first of all which route is going to be easiest for them because it's a lot easier for us to work our cables around than it is for them to do the pipe work around so in this instance they've chose straight ahead which is fine our consumer unit is going to come up here because this is where the incomer comes in down the bottom it's then going to come up and then everything's going to drop down into that area now to make it really easy now we have got an apprentice on site as well 
So what I've done here is a piece of capping, took about two minutes to do, straight across, giving you some sort of idea on where to take things. So this section here is going to be our consumer unit in there. We've then got this, it's only there because it's cable tied and we didn't want to do it up there, so that'll end up further away from the consumer unit for our alarm cables. We've got our data cables and our coax, where the coax splitter will go at the end and the sky distribution. We've even gone to the extent of labeling them so that it's your largest load to your smallest load, if you like. So your hob, for example, on a six mil, oh, forgot I'm on that dual camera. Your hob, for example, it's on a six mil, down to you, you at least one, which is probably going to be something like your ring doorbell transformer or a feed for a driver, um, for an LED driver, lights, etc. Moving back up towards rings or radials and then rings to your largest loads. If you've got car chargers, etc., they would sit up there as well. When they come in, we've done a direct route either side here. So when they bring the cables in, or when I bring the cables in, or anyone brings the cables in, they know exactly where to go. They don't have to think, oh, and it doesn't get crossed over because the, above you can see I've put general cable tie bases in so that you can drop it almost in order. And then when it comes to capping it up and dropping it down the wall, they're already near enough in place. Once you've tied in and you've tightened all the cable ties up, they should, in theory, near enough drop down into position. Once we get them to that point there, um, what we do then is we then cap it. So what I'll do, <coughs> excuse me, very quickly, is sniff next door, and we'll have a little look at one that was done. Now this one that was done next door was our first one on site. And there's been a few improvements made to the system, if you like. But you get the general idea. So in here, you've got all your capping that comes down from up above. You can see there where the cables have been tied in. Then they go down into the capping. Again, labelled up. So what we'll do when we'll cap them is we'll label them. So hob, kitchen ring, utility ring, down ring, up ring, etc, etc. That makes it easy when it comes to ordering the board as well. Because we've almost got a, um, a schedule for the board. They come down into the capping and they have the length left on them. So we can then mount the board at the regulation height. Uh, 1650 I think it is and um, for your switches then the alarm cable comes down next to it we've got space there for the alarm um, system to go in or it can drop down here we've then got the fuse spares for each one which are just taken from there and given their own datas come down into a brush plate I'm not sure if you can see that but the datas come down into well it will come through a brush plate and then into the distribution we've got the incoming BT two sockets for anything that needs to be plugged in and then the coax on the far side so it just makes it really really easy um, it's sort of like a wiring by numbers if you like no one can really get it wrong um, we're all working to the same page we're all working off the same hymn sheet if you want to put it that way if you're so inclined and it makes it a lot easier at the end what we found in the previous plot is that we actually spent half a day just sorting that room out because we weren't sure on the actual final layout it wasn't given to us whereas in here now it shouldn't take anywhere near as long as that's basically it should just be neatening up the cables at the top by tying them in and then capping it down so that's how we organize them down into the board how we'll get them down into the alarm panel and how we'll get them um the data and the coaxes in so what i'll do now is i'll show you what about upstairs so Moving upstairs now, as you can see, we haven't started up here yet, um, the joiners have, <laughs> you can tell the joiners have been in, well, anyway, so upstairs, what we what we have actually done is we have actually box fixed, I'm not going to talk you through the switching in here again because you've seen it 10 million times, um, and I won't go on about the armhead cutter which is insanely good, I won't. But what we have done is we have box fixed and this is an example of what to expect from upstairs so before what i was talking about it goes in across you come up the stairs straight ahead imagine you've got a route below us you can now split off into the two bathrooms you can take it to the far wall nice easy run straight from the consumer unit which is somewhere here below us nice easy run to the back wall up and then we come up through the floor for all of our accessories 
The only thing that goes up above is things like light switches. So here where we've got a switch, that goes up through there and it's clipped into position. And it massively reduces the amount of time clipping and makes it well neater, well easier. So as an example, here where we've drilled down, this is going to be a TV point. So you've got a five amp for a lamp, a socket, a socket for the TV if you like, um, and then you've got your data cable coming down. So as you can see, that goes straight through to downstairs. And what I'll do is I'll push a bit of length down so we can find it nice and easy downstairs. <clears throat> so that cable comes downstairs. And this is our little loop here that has just come down from upstairs. And now, because of that cross system, it now can just jump into this with the downstairs data, run all the way along, following the route. This route just jumps over there and then comes out here all the way around. Then it can be split down into the data. If it was alarm, it will go to the alarm. If it was coax, it will go to the coax. Exactly the same with the power. The socket, which was right next to it upstairs, will come down in the hole there and there. They'll come down. They just go that way slightly jump onto that run with the power. Obviously, both of them won't because it's a ring, but, and then drops down. So one leg, let's say for example, that was gonna be our first leg. It'll come up, we'll wire it down here, through to this point. We'll then send it up. We'll take whatever we need from it. It'll then come back down, through to the next one. Down, through to the next one, using the system that's downstairs. And because we've got that cross system, if you wanna call it that, which I've just made up and I keep saying it, it's very annoying. It's the only way I can think of describing it. Um, you can get to pretty much anywhere in the house using the routes that we've already planned in downstairs. So we know along the walls in every room downstairs there's going to be something, whether it's a five amp or a socket or a switch. So again, there's your route and we can just go over. So we can run all the way down or when you get down to this section here, coming across the front of the house, there's our next one. So you've got another route going straight the way down. So it's very, very easy. That's a power one that wasn't utilized. We came from that way around this time, but it's very, very easy to get across. And then when we start pulling the power in, we haven't done the ring in here yet. That'll come down there, drop down into the socket. But again, from upstairs, every room has the bedsides directly above. So it's literally a case of just dropping down, jumping onto these routes and making its way around the ring. And only the first leg and the return leg will go in. So I hope that gives you some sort of idea um, on how we organize it, how we get it to where it needs to be in the end. Um, might give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a help. Um, as I say, we've we've put this in, and I can say it's for the apprentice, but it's not. It's for me as well. It's for everyone. It just makes it easier. You don't have to think, and you you have you can have twenty five people wire it twenty five different ways. So if you just label it up, you can't really go wrong. So that is how. That was about we do it so if you've got any comments you've got any ideas that might make it even better for us please let us know um, i would love to know how to make it go quicker um but other than that i hope you you've enjoyed the video i hope it helps um if you hate it it's fine give it a hate like and um, if you hate me give it a hate like not really bothered um and i'm gonna crack on now get my gear in uh, it's coming up to quarter past six in the a.m so i'm quite tired i'm gonna finish my coffee off and get some music on. I hope you'll have a lovely day.